Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, dark glasses and no apologies because I'm out in bright uh, sunshine at the wonderful uh, garden at the Hepworth Gallery in Wakefield and uh, this is a Tom Stuart Smith designed garden and uh, it's really beautiful mixed planting and uh, the big swathes of perennials and multi-stem trees and hedging and uh, some seating as well and some lovely cool grass for myself and Lexi to, to sit on. So I thought I would just uh, turn the camera around in a minute and give you a little bit of a walk through uh, because Plants and planting is kind of close to my heart. I was originally a garden and landscape designer and that's always been a really important uh, aspect of uh, my interest in landscape. And so I thought I would bite the bullet and start doing some exploratory studies uh, of uh, plants and planting and see where it takes me actually. So I'm going to be doing a lot of sketchbook studies, but I want to be able to, to explore it so that I can understand what it is that I'm particularly interested in and what it is I might want to portray and develop into more abstract paintings and, and work. And so this is really a sort of start point. And so uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a walk through this garden so you can see the wonderful plants in this uh, lovely sunlight. And uh, then I'll share just a little bit of, of some of the studies that I've been doing. And I'm just really, as I said, um, it's actually really important when you are delving into a subject not to get too caught up with what you should or could or will do um, with it. It's, although it's tempting, it's, it's much, I think, much more fruitful to actually be quite open with your explorations at first. And so I am just here today really to experience the space, to experience the planting, to start to feel what the um, planting is doing, how it is, um, why certain things have different, have certain effects. And so I'm not in any particular mindset. I'm, I'm doing some drawing or some mark making, but really quite loose. I don't know where it's going. I'm trying not to get too caught up um, with what, you know, it is. I might be interested at this point. I'm just literally exploring. What is it that I'm interested in? What is it that is catching my attention? If it's catching my attention, why is it catching my attention? What is it about it? Is it moving wonderfully in the breeze, like some of these grasses? Is it catching the light? Is it providing really a lot of drama? Or is it quite quietly, quietly? Not like Lexi here, which is quite noisy. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm gonna stop uh, yattering and turn the camera around and share with you. Okay, so here we are. The traffic noise is because it's actually quite close to a main road. And uh, I'm here today with my lovely greyhound, Lexi. And uh, we've been uh, sitting uh, under some trees in the shade because it's rather a warm day here. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the wonderful uh, planting. Uh, there's Nautia over there, there's Euphorbia, there are all sorts of irises, uh, salvias, this is a beech hedge. Um, so some beautiful planting and it changes a lot throughout the year. So uh, in June it's rather uh, purple uh, and yellow. I'm sure when I'm, I'm here later on in the year teaching uh, it will be much more golden because it will be in the autumn. And uh, oh, look at these wonderful uh, alliums in flower, Christophii. And uh, these, I think, are echinaceas about to come into flower. We've got gorgeous foliage as well as flowers here. And uh, some lovely seating as well. Uh, and then these rather wonderful multi-stem trees, of which there are a number of different ones, including Roos. Um, and you can see the brilliant purple and it's so gorgeous against the yellow um, and uh, also geraniums and just a sort of huge plethora of plants really just a whole gorgeous mixed perennial planting um, and these umbelliferas are all gorgeous aren't they and uh, the iris is going over but actually really architectural um, and such a nice uh, space 
and if I kind of whiz round you can see that's the cafe over there they don't always have it open but it's rather nice but I'm here really to, to look at the planting and I just knew I'd have uh, a really good uh, mix of planting to be able to start exploring uh, with my mixed media and it's just a first visit so and it's rather a warm day so I'm not exactly doing huge amounts of, of, of drawing but I'm, I'm doing some and it's just a really nice uh, mixed planting. Now I must go over here to finish and share with you uh, some of the rather gorgeous planting. Sorry, my lovely greyhound. She's. And I was thinking, oh, there's a Achillea here. I don't know if you can see the flat heads of the yellow Achillea there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm a big fan of Achillea. And then there's the the, the button tops of. I think that's Nautia. Um, and then here is the wonderful Flomis. Uh, just like, you know, sort of tears on a cake stand. Flomis Rossiniana, uh, I think. Rossiniana, I can't say it, but um, it's uh, rather gorgeous in this sort of way. I'll go in really close so you can see. And it is just like multiple tears. And they're in these big, Patches and the yellow against the purple of those salvias is really lovely. And then there's the white um, pike spikes, spikes coming up through it. And uh, then, of course, there's the, the really intense yellow Achillea there. So hopefully you get a real sense of this rather gorgeous garden and uh, all of the colours and uh, the patterning as well, actually. Um, and the big uh, blocks of colour and how that kind of forms quite a wonderful patchwork and how these big um, swathes work. Okay, I'm going to end it there. Uh, I just thought I would share with you and I'm going to share with you some of the drawings but I just wanted to share uh, a little bit of the garden. Okay, so I'll show you some of the mixed media studies. I'm just doing, I'm just it's the very first time I've drawn in this garden, so I'm uh, just looking around me, taking it easy, noticing what I notice, making some, starting to make some, some marks in different media. And uh, what I've just started is a sheet. And uh, on this sheet, um, I have some pink ink uh, that I dropped into some water. And uh, the inspiration was these uh, pink frothy flowers over into the distance there and I am going to continue in the same way noticing what I notice and making the marks but I'm quite enjoying using the ink for flowers and that's because there's a looseness to it and there's a looseness and it kind of isn't as static there's a kind of a movement so I'm quite enjoying that and um, I'm just uh, trying actually to open my ink. I'm doing it very successfully at the moment. I'm trying to open it. Here we are. And I'm going to just drop it onto here. And I've become a little bit inspired by some flowers. And I'm going to just do some drops. And then I'm going to spray it. Um, I'm trying different things and making quite a mess. Um, you need to be careful in this garden though because uh, I don't want to wreck the whole place. And I don't have my holder with me because I have my Greyhound Lexi and um, having lots of things to carry plus managing Lexi wasn't really the way it was going to work today. So and I've got some a few tools here so this is my one of my bamboo um, things. I thought I was just going to drop it in there so I had to quickly So just noticing what I notice, looking in different directions this uh, might well be folded um, I'm not after anything in particular at this moment in time I just want to do a little bit of exploration today and not be too um, organised and strict with myself.
so I have started to apply mm -hmm. some watercolour to this sheet now and what I was going to just mention was that those of you that have known me for a while will know that I used to when I was doing more of a sort of a illustration or urban sketching style I had this thing where I would do what I call colour first so I would put colour down in a very sort of um, expressive way in a very sort of um, quick way sort of immediate response and then I would draw line work dark line work over the top now that wouldn't necessarily depending on what you were after at the end be appropriate here but what I've been doing is putting just sort of senses of um, color and uh, this is an umbellifera and then what I've been doing is using this instead of what I would you know if I was using black ink if I was doing that usual illustrational style what I can do then here is I can start dragging and doing something that's a little bit more sensitive. Um. Okay, so this is, uh, or are, and these are, I should say, a couple of mixed uh, pastel uh, images that I did out on location. And I didn't uh, film the, the, the process because it was just a little bit too, too tricky because I was working quite fast. And I was using cheap uh, soft pastel and oil pastel and uh, it's uh, a process which is quite um, sort of fruitful in a sense because it's quite you know you, you create these quite quickly these are a4 size and i'm going to um, cut them up and i'm going to use a kind of matisse approach with scissors instead of um, you know, sort of following the line i'm going to be looking at the subject matter and uh, cutting them uh, with the scissors and then displaying them on the colours that I have described from the landscape. Now I've done this before on my channel and I showed you with the spring woodland so um, I'll put the link to that in the notes but these ones I haven't actually done the cutting up yet or anything else because I was just doing the first stage really out on location and I may well go back and complete it or I might um, do it sort of differently. So there we are, it's just trying to sort of get my head around what it is I'm interested in and making marks and so on. That's just one, one approach that I took. So I hope that you get a, a, a feel for um, how uh, exploratory I was being uh, out on location. I wasn't really putting any pressure on myself to uh, really to do anything. Um, and uh, it's just a, a good route in really. So thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.